water here management is not actually a new science. It is only in the minister and the strategy chosen to rehabilitate uh, the degraded lands. like a very positive contagious it's not a disease it's a very positive thing but it, it was it was like a very contagious thing L like like a very very positive virus <laughs> we have a plan to to change this area to irrigable area 180 hectares 180 hectares to change in, uh, to irrigable area in the coming two years. People st started to care for their land. The trust between the government and the people or the, uh, the public has been improved. The, the lack of that trust was uh, damaging even the natural resources in the country. In Ethiopia, more than 49% of the population lives in the highlands, more than 2200 meters above the sea level. These areas get high rainfall, up to 2200 meters annually, often as brief but intense storms. Due to the steep slopes and sharp downpours, intense soil erosion has occurred for at least 100 years. Soil erosion leads to a loss in vegetation cover, which absorbs water and holds the soil together. Erosion leads to more erosion. More and more soil is lost to runoff, and land's capacity to absorb and retain water decreases. Soil loss in Ethiopia is estimated to be around 400 tons per hectare. This also indicates how much water just runs off across the land unutilized. This is critical to livelihoods and well-being, as 85% of the people are employed in agriculture, which makes for 45% of the GDP. Tigray is one of Ethiopia's 10 regional states. It's located in the north of the country. High altitude, short bursts of intense rainfall and depletion of soil and water resources had turned it into one of the most impoverished regions of the world. It was totally dusty and with a mirage of dust. Uh, it's very arid where you cannot see any vegetation at all. Uh, when it goes to uh, each house, the life was so destituted, very I, 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 you cannot uh, believe that people are making life over there. The people of this area is more affected by uh, erosion in many years. Before 10 years, there was a more flood, a more uh, trusty. Uh, I remember some 15 years uh, ago, we were trying to explore groundwater for uh, uh, water supply and uh, the problem that we have been facing at that time was uh, we tried to find uh, very uh, localized uh, areas which are uh, we, we think that they are their source of groundwater but the rate of success was really very very low because there was no recharge to this to the, to, to, to the system and uh, most of the groundwater that we have been looking for we are, get, we are dry or they dry in time. Traditional irrigation practice in the whole region had only been 3,400 for almost 10, 12 years. Uh, it was in the mind of mo most of the people that there could not be any change coming into this area by investing here. We have a lot of uh, 
rivers, big rivers, or the river basin system. Uh, we have 12 uh, uh, major river systems in the country. All are you know, living the country. They originate from the highland and they flow outward, <coughs> carrying a lot of uh, water, soil, um, nutrients, fertilizer, seeds, compost, and uh, everything. So uh, that's why you know our uh, terrain is uh, urging us to follow uh, a watershed system for conserving the natural resources that we have. Almost 20 years ago, this argument appealed to the expertise and sensibilities of the Ethiopian government. It decided to design its rural development policy around this central idea. By planning land and water use appropriately, soil loss can be minimized and more water can be retained and used in the watershed. This increases the productivity of land and improves land-related livelihoods. One, the government and also the ruling party uh, believe, strongly believe that soil and water conservation in general, the natural resource management, is, uh, th there is no alternative to it. And then next, uh, I think the, uh, a proper plan is designed in such a way that that commitment could be in place. Then this, the other uh, step which is uh, introduced is people should be convinced so that they really understand they will benefit from it. It was really hard for them to be convinced at first, after putting all that effort, the first thing that comes up is an immediate change in the biosystem. Because this has given them a glimpse of hope, then they still opted for continuing the purpose. It is now easy to see why the government insisted on people's participation. Even on a casual drive through Tigray, you notice the water harvesting and soil conservation structures dotting the hillsides. Collectively, they give the impression that something huge, large-scale is going on. And yet when you look closely, you see small, simple structures made of stone and locally available material. Even the smallest fields look carefully planned. It has been like a very positive, contagious, like, like a very, very positive virus. Doing more activities, more t 
te technologies such as uh, hill terraces, deep trenches, half moons, nagariums, deep trenches, uh, gaurian check dams, stone, stone loose check dams, uh, and the like, and the like. Now it's not difficult to find shallow groundwater almost in most parts of Tigray. The stream that had been dry for years started up popping. Now the groundwater is much better, even new springs are coming. After doing the activities, we have getting the springs in the farmlands. Now they are able to get whatever for drinking, for their livestock and, and the like in a very, very close areas. Irrigation practices increased initially to 11,000, then to 21,000, and then to 80,000. Now this year, we are saying we have 125,000 hectares under irrigation. With more water and healthier soil, Tigray's once added ecology began to change. Green vegetation fought its way back into the brown landscape. The forestry coverage is uh, uh, starting to cover the area uh, from 0 0.5 now to 8% coverage they have. With a healthy ecosystem, there was so much more that people could do to improve their lives and livelihoods. Farmers are now producing much more per hectare than ever before. Crop productivity has increased from about 5 million quintal now to about 34 million quintal. Given with a very slight cultivation, I mean, the, with a very slight change in the total cultivation area. Say it was 1.1 million, now it is 1.25 million. This is the difference. But the productivity has increased sixfold. Before they harvest one at a time and the, from one hectare, 10 quintal per hectare. And after they have doing that activities, sorghum, we have getting 48 quintal per hectare. The improved soil and water situation has enabled many people to grow fruits. Increased incomes have enabled many others to afford them. Fruits are now an important source of nutrition. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Livestock is crucial to livelihoods in Tigray's farm based economy. There is now more feed and more water to nourish the animals and so they are more productive. The return of bees to Tigray was another indication that the ecosystem was in good health. Beekeeping has once again become an important source of income and nutrition. The honey production they have in that area, they had lost it for 
many years but now they see the production has in terms of quality and quantity increased watershed based resource management programs are hardly a new concept but what happened in tigray is considered extraordinary given how much the government was committed to the idea and how much the people rallied behind it i don't think uh it's uh, uh enough to say a program or whatever i think better to say movement because this has been uh, you know people have been mobilized uh, you know decision makers at various levels have been mobilized to to, to implement uh, 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 these programs and uh, and the program is very very extensive like in other parts of ethiopia people were initially paid to carry out soil and water conservation activities in tigray donor supported food for work and social safety net programs funded the effort but on seeing the direct benefits to their income and livelihoods people took it upon themselves to plan implement and manage these activities in tigray in hararge people have done this watershed management without the psnp money that should be the case people shouldn't be shouldn't be paid for what they are doing for their water shares shouldn't do it for grains shouldn't do it for money responsibilities have been continuously devolving from the government to the community and finally to the level of the individual farmers who have been investing their own time and money on these activities now they are they are almost doubling or sometimes uh, you know tripling their their income their 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 productivity as a result of these conservations i think this is the biggest incentive the level of involvement of the government is uh, changing from more of hardware to more of software the government will be focusing on 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 on, on other issues like on capacity building on uh, knowledge uh, transfer and creation and uh, uh, on 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 the overall uh, management and uh, governance and other issues it is the decentralized nature of the watershed movement that is the reason for its rapid spread and wide coverage they were doing it for years with space and pre money but when the they became willing and get convinced 40 year days of campaign in tigra and some couple of months of campaign in hararge in eastern ethiopia they have finished all their assignments now they have transformed their areas to their credit the federal and regional governments have been making the broader policy environment more conducive for people's participation While all land in Ethiopia is still government owned farmers can now lease and sublease plots with greater security of tenure they have full rights over the produce this provides the incentive to make long term investments in improving soil and water resources and as far as you have a sense of ownership you can do something permanent and this sense uh, uh, having this uh, in their mind people start to care for their land mm, the trust between the government and the people or the uh, the public has been improved that the lack of that trust was uh, damaging even the natural resources in the country planning of the watershed management activities is a long and sometimes tedious process the idea is to try and capture inputs from all levels of governance and society so the planning is both ways framework planning is developed by the region by the top government but as always the final plan endorsement is coming from the bottom there are administrative units which goes from the federal government to the smallest village we said the direction we set a framework planning this integrity land use plans will be uh, ratified at all level 
each Wereda, the district, and the Kabale, which is the Peasant Association, will try to regionalize or localize this plan, whether it fits to its circumstance or not. Then it can accept it, it can reject it. experts up to the decision makers they know that the, the changes are very positive but it's not scientifically uh, measured now it's time to do more research because now it was uh, constructing structures but later on it could be how to keep that sustainable <laughs> in previous times we don't go uh, with such this type of aggressive uh, development stimulating approach but now i think we are uh, on the right proper proper track yeah now we should not be hungry sleeping on the top of the water <laughs>